The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In today's gospel reading, we close with verse 23. The text through the end of the chapter, just a short piece, goes this way. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick and those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics. And he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, the Ten Cities, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. His message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heaven has come near. How? People are getting healed, the gospel's getting preached, followers are dropping everything in order to follow. Jesus' brilliant light bursts across the entire Palestine landscape, including the tradition, traditional land of Israel as well, as well uh, east of the Jordan River and also northward through all the land of Syria. Suddenly, Jesus is very popular, much known and talked about and incredibly effective. It's all very exciting. He proclaims good news of the kingdom and heals and cures every sort of malady. Whoever came or was brought to him, the sick, diseased, the pained, the demonized, the epileptics, the paralytics. Thus, it seems obvious to me that God's will, the heavenly kingdom, includes this individual attention, health and wholeness for everyone everywhere, along with the inclusion of all people from all regions. Even though Matthew's witness in particular tells us that Jesus was exclusively sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's not until the final chapter that we read the command to make disciples of all nations. So to summarize for a moment, the intense light of Jesus is laser focused on three and perhaps consecutive targets. Mission, message, and ministry. His mission is to Israel. His message is of repentance and the nearness of heaven's kingdom. And his ministry of miracles goes without saying. Arguably, Jesus' laser focus on mission gives way to his focus on message. And Jesus' laser focus on message, uh, mission and message gives way to his amazing activity of miracles. Being laser focused is a great lesson about successful Christian living and church activity and probably life itself. It's also a great protection, a great assuredness against the threat of any myriad of distractions we face because 
You can only focus on one target at a time. As well, a choice for one eliminates all the rest. That's why our English word for decision means to cut away. A decision cuts away every other possible choice. If we look at Epiphany like it's a laser light weapon of love and calling and power and freedom, then Jesus completes his 40 day basic training in the temptation wilderness of Judea. He returns in the power of the Holy Spirit, according to Luke, and immediately puts into practice this mission of his father, of his divine parent. Jesus' mission, as I said, to the people of Israel, his message twofold, repent, and the kingdom of heaven is near. Well, let's hone in on that phrase, repent, and the kingdom of heaven is near. Repentance is an interesting Greek word. It's the Greek word metanoia. You've probably heard that before. We think of it as owning up to our own particular problems and sins, confessing them to God and to one another, and receiving forgiveness. But the Greek word really has none of that, not a hint. Metanoia literally means to think differently or have a different mindset or mind. The First Nations version of the New Testament says it's time to change your thinking and begin your great journey. So coupled with the idea of the nearness of the kingdom, Jesus is telling us heaven is closer than you think. It's time to think differently about it. Our call is more to lift up our eyes to the kingdom's nearness and its possibilities and its potential than about focusing in on our shortcomings and failures. Although if confession and forgiveness gets us to lift our eyes and change how we think, then all the better. So Jesus preaches that heaven isn't absent or removed and that heaven isn't future or rather it's nearby, present, here and now. As a result of this new message, people from all regions everywhere are being made whole, getting healed, cured, right and left, as the saying goes. The disciples, too, are radically affected, caught up into the vortex. When Jesus says, follow me, they just drop everything and go. They can't not. Immediately or straightway is a favorite word in the Gospel of Mark for Jesus' activity. But notice it appears here in terms of addressing what the disciples are doing. Immediately, Peter and Andrew left their nets in the lake water and followed him. Immediately, James and John left the boat with their father and followed him. Suddenly, almost magically, they were just as laser focused about following Jesus as he was about calling them. It's because heaven is near. It's like this nuclear explosion of grace and love and goodness and wholeness so that the broken world isn't broken anymore. We see it differently. Heaven is near, or it's like an implosion of time where original past and eternal future furiously collide in on each other and come right here, right now, where we are. No wonder the prophet says the people who walk in darkness have seen this brilliant light. Brilliant, radiant light is heaven's reality for us now. Whereas Jesus was well able to sustain this clarity of vision, we not so much. It seems we're drawn and repelled at the same time. We experience great moments of brilliance. You know what it means to have an epiphany. Aha, I see it. And then it gets to be too much. We put on our dark glasses again and return to shadowy distortions. The world made new goes back to looking like it did before with all its brokenness and injustice and poverty and disease, etc. In the same way, the brilliant flashing light and blazing fire on Mount Sinai, the brilliant glory radiating from Moses' face, they were all too much for God's covenant people. So they said, you go to God, Moses. We can't bear it. Heaven's revelation may be too much for us to handle. In that case, it's comfortable to settle for linear time and muddle around through chance and circumstance. 
It's where we find some security. But concurrently, we yearn. We yearn for more, for higher, for better, for different, for new, for renewed, for brilliant, for perfect. We yearn for such days to happen now as when Jesus preached. We yearn as well for God's heart and purpose for Agnes Day to be revealed and unfold for us in bright new ways. Yearning is praying. And yearning or praying helps us begin to think about and see things differently again and again and again. Also concurrently, we relish and delight in bright promises that are right in front of us. New possibilities, new potentials. I've gotten this sense ever since I came in the doors of this church. There's a community sense of eagerness and anticipation. For what? Well, we're trying to figure that out. Spiritual yearnings have led us to wonder about our mission statement and helped to inspire the recent congregational survey. We want to get a solid read on where we're going, on where the Holy Spirit is leading us so that we can be sure to be an intimate part of what God's unfolding plan is for us and our neighbors. And also, just as suddenly uh, as the brightness of Jesus' ministry came on the heels of John the Baptist's, maybe I'll rephrase this so you get it here. Also, just as the sudden brightness of Jesus' ministry came on the heels of John the Baptist's senseless arrest by King Herod, sometimes it takes a negative turn or an unexpected opposition, or an injustice, or a disaster, to precipitate a burst of uncommon good and blessing. The terrible pandemic that we have all suffered through has got to be an example of that. Or maybe sometimes, like Alice in Wonderland, we're compelled to do our best to follow a white rabbit and find ourselves down a hole of unexpected adventures and obstacles. But no matter what happens, either by us or to us, we're still certain that there's a golden key and we're going to make it through the door to the beautiful garden. Yesterday, I sat in on a meeting of the care team. I understand that this was their first in-person meeting since the time of the pandemic. My read on the people who attended notes their quiet joy of just being together and especially being able to be free to be about the business of effective care to members and neighbors. My read involves a sense of quiet excitement to be on a new adventure together with God and each other. And it's not just the care team where I get the sense. It's present at Theology on Tap or text study or in a staff meeting or during preschool chapel or among the worship team and even on the executive committee or the church council. Heaven is near. Goodness is near. We can feel it. We can see it on the faces of each other. The kingdom of heaven is near. And while we strive to be able to see its presence with the same clarity that Jesus did, we attend with laser focus on the mission and message and ministry we know God has given us already. Jesus' mission to Israel, his message, heaven's nearness, his ministry miracles. Our mission is to the person right in front of us. Our message is encouragement and concern and supportive care. And our ministry is love and service in word and action. While we wait for heaven to be fully revealed, while we wait for the next chapter of God's dream for Agnes Day, this is how we show ourselves and others that the kingdom of heaven is near. We faithfully focus on and speak and do those things that we know God has already tasked us to do. Amen.